I recently came across some interesting results regarding Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone with DualSense and DualSense Edge on PS5, which may help you to become faster, have a stable controller connection and a huge change in the game camera care settings that can improve your experience once you know how everything works. For example, did you know this picture or this one that I showed you in the older videos isn't correct? And the correct game curve looks something similar to this? And it's not the same for DualSense and Edge. So stick around for the new Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 test in 2024. Let's start with the resolution settings. We tested a few of them in the last video, but some of you asked what if we use 1080p 120Hz mode, 1080i or even 720p. They all sound interesting to me, so I repeated the test with both controllers after the latest patch to see which resolution is the fastest. I used this tool to test and see how much power the console uses in different resolutions and if there is a significant difference in terms of power consumption in different modes. I've also bought a new tool that shows me the output voltage and current usage from every USB port on PS5 separately, and a method to test the pooling rate in different resolutions for each controller and we'll get into them soon soon after. Based on over 100 tests I made with both controllers, here are the results in different resolutions and now we check to see which is the best choice depending on your controller and of course your TV or monitor model. I'm pretty sure many of you know that input lag is the time when you press a button until it works in the game, but I have to repeat it for new viewers, you know. So as you can see in the test results, when it comes to 120Hz mode, the best bet is typically higher resolution, but if you have a TV or monitor that doesn't support 4K 120Hz, in those cases if it supports 1080p or 1440p 120Hz, that's a better choice compared to 2160p aka 4K 60Hz. Otherwise, I don't see any reason to use 1080p, 1080i or 720p as they all cause more input delay compared to 4K. But what I ask you to do first is check ratings.com and then search your TV or monitor model. Search for the input delay section on this website. For example, for this monitor, I can either play on 4K 60fps mode or 1440p 120Hz. The input lag in 60Hz mode is 9 milliseconds, while in 120Hz mode is less than 5 milliseconds. Considering Edge has a lower input lag in 1440p 120Hz mode compared to 4K 60Hz mode, it's the best choice to play on 1440p instead of 4K. Some other monitors may support 120Hz only in 1080p. You can always check it in ratings.com. For TVs, I checked the AGC2 input lag in 1080p and 1440p and 4K 120Hz and it's very similar, less than 6 milliseconds. And the fastest response time for Edge is in 4K 120Hz mode, so I choose 4K for this TV. You might be wondering about power consumption and usage in 4K 1080p and others. Based on a few tests I made with this micro power monitor in private maps in 120Hz mode, the power usage is very similar but the PS5 used 5 watts higher power on average when I was using lower resolutions like 1080p, meaning the PS5 used less power when playing in 4K and 1440p compared to 1080p. The reason might be because PS5 is downscaling the high quality picture and high sized picture to a lower resolution to fit the screen, but overall using a lower resolution won't help with lower power usage in Call of Duty. That's what we know. So far you've learned about different resolutions and how they may affect the input lag. But there is something new I realized recently. The in-game FPS changes can affect the initial input lag. FPS means frames per second and has a direct effect on the smoothness of your controller and picture. As higher the FPS, as better it feels. On PS5 and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, if I always have 120 FPS, I typically get 10 milliseconds delay in 4K 120Hz mode. But what if my FPS drops to 100 or 80 or less? The delay change and adds jitter and the jitter is the difference between the highest and the lowest value. Meaning sometimes you get higher input lag, especially when you are fighting, you may notice the FPS drops in COD. That's where we want it to be stable. But how could we stabilize FPS in Modern Warfare 3 on PS5? Well, there are a few options like field of view, effects, and fidelity effects cast that have an impact on that. And by that, I don't mean lower is better. No, sometimes 50 is better than zero. 
and many more that needs to be tested in multiple scenarios to see in which case we can get a more stable frame rate when engaging in a fight. If you'd like to see a video on this topic, let me know in the comment section and I will cover it in the future videos. There's an update to the USB-C port on your PS5. I've got a new tool where I can check USB ratings for any device. Some people are worried that the USB-C port may hurt their controller, but the answer is it won't cause any issues because based on the test I made, the input voltage is 5 volts and the current is adjusted by the controller. The input rating for DualSense and Edge is also 5 volts up to 1.5 ampere, so you'll be fine. And you can get a Type-C to Type-C cord and use the Type-C front port if you like. Some of you asked for overclocking the controller for PS5. The fact is most of the time we can't get anything lower than 1 millisecond on PS5 games. Overclocking is not like what you think. I've tested that on PC before and in some cases it made it even worse. The input jitter was was high and the controller was unstable based on the facts not the feelings i haven't tried overclocking for ps5 and i don't recommend it but if you'd like to see a video about that topic the comment section is all yours only if high demand this part is getting a bit nerdy but i tested the polling rate of both dualsense and edge by connecting the controller to ps5 and pc simultaneously and reading the polling rate from the active controller and they are both close to 1000 hertz and that Sorry for interruption, I have to update this part. After I made multiple tests for some reason, if you connect the DualSense with USB cable, the pulling rate is reported as 250Hz, while DualSense Edge is around 1000Hz. Even with Bluetooth, DualSense Edge has a pulling rate of around 1000Hz, while DualSense barely touches 700Hz. I don't know what's the reason and I have to dig into this topic, so let me know in the comments if you want to see a video on this one. The difference between 250Hz and 1000 Hz is something like 3 milliseconds, but if you are using Bluetooth, it's almost fine. So what are you so worried about? Let's go to the next part which is a new curve test I recently came across from this channel that says the Call of Duty curves aren't the way you think. He tested them in 60Hz mode but now I want to take this test further and test all response curves in 120Hz mode to see how they look like in real scenarios. So the curve I showed you before may not be accurate and the slope scale settings might be needed to get a real linear curve. Let's check it out. For this test I connected the controller to PC and PS5 Simon simultaneously, don't ask me how, and I can read the data as it's going through the console. What I do is using a fixed tool to keep the analog stick in a fixed position and see how long it takes to do a full 360 degrees rotation. I start from 15% and I will refine the start later. So the app I use here has a value of 0 to 255 from all the way left to all the way right. In the middle, we have a value of almost 128. I set the dead zone to these values by the way. I'm not gonna blow your mind with an explanation of how I did this. But I tested it for many hours with the default slope scale which is 1 in all 3 response curves and we have a chart similar to this. On this part we have a max push value, on the other side we have the time to 360 degrees rotation per second. So we want to see how long it takes to do a full rotation on each speed for each curve system if using the same settings. Here's the final result and now you can see how linear, standard and dynamic almost look in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, 120Hz mode in 2024 with the default slope scale of 1. I was a bit surprised too, but now we have a lot better understanding of how it works and much more possibilities to play with the settings with DualSense Edge. Based on this test, I currently prefer dynamic with a slope scale of 0.80 or 0.90 and that typically works better for me. But let me know which one you prefer. Keep in mind this test was done in 9 steps, that's why the curve isn't smooth. But it's all most of what you get in the game. More importantly, this test was done on a normal DualSense controller. The interesting part is some people feel DualSense Edge thumb sticks aren't as smooth or the same as DualSense. With this method of testing, we can test that too with DualSense Edge and default curve to see if in reality it matches the dual sense or not. And if not, what settings can give us the closest response curve to a normal dual sense? Which I think many of us would be interested in that one. It has been one of the biggest demands from people who play with dual sense edge among a new test for the slope scale settings to see how would it affect the response curve and if there is any way to get a faster response at the start too. I'm very interested in making a new video on this topic and doing everything we can to match dual sense edge default curve 
with the dual sense and maybe finding the reason why it feels different so let me know in the comment section if you are interested in it too and which other options we should check and test for the fps test like graphic settings and for the controller which one feels smoother to you by default is it dual sense or dual sense edge and which curve in dual sense edge feels closer to dual sense it will help me to make the test and match them faster for you i should also mention i'm uploading lower demand games in my new channel daniel zedaj pro max like fc24 and others so i put a link to that channel here for other games as in this channel i focus on popular topics if you are looking for the best ps5 audio settings for all games and call of duty we have a full video on that one which can help a lot the link is in the comments or you can check it from the end of the screen